What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. You you have, as you mentioned, talked about some of these major topics, though, on your channel with yeah. guests and yourself, whether it be consciousness, the beginning of everything, which we've talked about a lot today, but also you mentioned aliens in there. Yeah, that's and a requirement you, in podcasting I mean, in it's a total fucking requirement now. <laughs> but, you know, I have so many open-minded thoughts on that. And you want to talk about stuff you don't know. I mean, my God, the whole thing is stuff you don't know. But we've seen a lot of news this year. We've seen congressional hearings, which in many ways are unprecedented mm -hmm. as far as the scale of what we saw this year with yeah. Grush and stuff like that. But we're, as a scientist, have you seen anything that points to, I'm not going to say definitive proof, but strong evidence to show First, that A, we are the simple one, we are not alone in the universe, and B, that some of these things that are that are being reported, the phenomena actually are true and did happen. Yeah, I mean, the most contentious part of my interview with Joe Rogan was about this topic. And it was interesting because I think there's a lot that we agree on, and then there's a lot that he will just use kind of these tropes and, and superficial arguments, which I've heard for a long time, which aren't you know, truly superficial in that they've been attributed to luminaries and heroes of mine like Carl Sagan, which is basically, I call that like the surface area argument. There's so many planets, there's so many stars, there's even more than Carl Sagan ever knew about, you know, when he died in the 90s. <clears throat> and he used to say, if there's nobody out there, it's an awful waste of space. Mm. Well, I told you, I've been to Antarctica, and I've been there twice. And it's not a very happening place, and it's not happening in a lot of different ways. One of which ways is that there's about 300 people there <laughs> in the Antarctic uh, winter, which is you know our summer in the northern hemisphere. There's about 300 people on the whole freaking continent. Are there any like restaurants there? There is. There are uh, military bases there, and the military bases supply food. And there's about 12 different countries that have different military bases there. Are we you know, sure it's just a base? There's not a little <laughs> something below there. Not like you know the descendants of Hitler hiding there. Okay. Aliens or yeah. some shit? No, they have plenty <laughs> of places to go in South America, it turns out. Yes, um, that's unfortunately true. Yeah. So when you uh, go there, you basically resign yourself to not seeing any other, you know, people besides the 49 people that might be in your particular military research base, where we go in the uh, United States owns the South Pole uh, because they're doing scientific research there. You're not allowed to mine minerals or mm. uh, construct military airfields there. And so it's just the military built the, the research facilities because they're the best for logistics like that. So when you go there, there's basically almost no... And now, not only are the only life forms that you see at the South Pole human beings, there's n absolutely no other forms of life effectively. In other words, you won't see birds flying overhead or penguins walking by. The South Pole is 700 miles away from the coast. So it's mm. incredibly remote. And Antarctica itself was only discovered like 114 years, 150 years ago in the late 1800s. People never discovered it until then. I've they, never looked into that yeah. now that you say that. Holy shit. They never reached the South Pole until 1911. Mm. It's less than a hundred year old, you know, continent that, and it's just barely been explored. Now, if you just said the same Sagan argument that it's a waste of space, you would say that, well, Antarctica must be a waste of space because there's only 49 people on the whole, you know, 200 people on the whole continent. The whole continent only has 200 people on it. It's the size of like three Texases. Okay? But it's so small relative to the universe. No, but I'm just saying, just take the, there's, but there's 8 billion people on earth, right? There's yeah. trillions of, of microbes on earth, right? Trillions of trillions. You're more microbe than you are human, But right? it's fucking cold down there. But like, so what? We know what we've learned about uh, life is that life finds a way, right? Like Jeff Goldblum said, life finds a way. Life <laughs> works. Life. You didn't think about what you should do. You just thought about what you could do. So <laughs> Channeling my Jeff Goldblum. That was um, pretty good. So yeah, yeah, and we we uh, we uh, guys stick together. So when you think, <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you make that kind of argument, you're assigning what's called a uniform prior. You're basically saying that like the probability for life should be the same everywhere. In other words, we are a form of life, and then any other planet like Earth should be basically as probable to find life there, right? If I told you there's an identical copy of Earth, forget about like what else is there, if there were dinosaurs there or not. If I just said there's an identical copy of Earth and it's in some other solar system, Proxima Centauri B, okay? And I said, um, it's identical. It's the same distance from a yellow type star. Um, it's in the habitable zone. There could be liquid water there. There might not be liquid water. It could be ice there. It could not be ice. It could be carbon dioxide. What would you say the, pro the odds are that life would exist there? Would you say it's zero? I mean, you definitely couldn't say it's zero, right? Based it's not on zero. Right. Would you say it's 
No. No, so somewhere in between, okay? And that's all you can say, right? Zero, no yeah, life, you talk 100%. about not proximate, holy right, shit. exactly. Yeah. So now you look at that and you say, well, the, look at the planet Mars. And I made this analogy on Joe Rogan. Mars is right next to an Earth-like planet. In fact, it's very Earth-like because it's Earth. <laughs> Earth and Mars exchanged particles for billions of years. We've been exchanging material. I have a meteorite that I didn't give to Joe Rogan, um, and I'm not giving it to you either, but it came from Mars. It didn't just come from the, the supernova that blew up that made this one that I gave you at great cost and personal uh, risk <laughs> to myself, bringing it through customs. And, I got to uh, like put that through something. <laughs> or uh, your something. mass spectrometer here. Um, but, uh, but despite that, there's no life on Mars. I can say, well, uh, Mars is different. It used to have liquid water. It used to have you know, abundant liquid water. It still has frozen water. It has carbon dioxide. Was that evidence for life? I mean, we would, if we see carbon dioxide on another exoplanet, we think it's, ev it's potential evidence for life. Sure. It certainly doesn't forbid it. So for all these reasons, there is some probability that you should say that if life is abundant in the universe, there should be life on the planet literally next door to the only planet we know for sure has life. And yet there's no evidence for life now. There's not even evidence for life that existed in the past. That in itself is not proof that life never existed there or that life couldn't exist there in the future. But again, we can only go with what we, uh, what we say right now. If I put a gun to your head and I said, I'm gonna take away all the YouTube plush studio and your play button and everything. I say, I'm gonna put a gun to your head. What is your factual knowledge, not your belief? What is the evidence for life outside of Earth? What would you say it is? It has to be zero or one. What would you say with zero or one? I don't think I can say zero or one. You wouldn't say zero? I mean, is there well, evidence well, no, for no, life? No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying if, if, if you're saying the answer can only be yes or no, is that what you're referring to yeah. there with zero saying, or one? Yeah. Is there definitely life outside of the Earth or definitely no life outside? I couldn't of the Earth? say either. Really? There's evidence for life outside. I mean, have you ever seen well, evidence for life outside of the Earth? Because I haven't. That's that's what I'm saying, though. We only know such a limited amount because we can. We've only even. I mean, we haven't even gone to Mars yet, and it's a planet right next to here. We've sent rovers and stuff. Yeah, no, I agree. But the fact is, we only have evidence for life on Earth. In other words, if I say to you sure. that there's life on on Mars or there's life anywhere on any particular thing, it only makes the probability you know, a, a little bit bigger to say that there could be life, right? You're basically making this argument that because the universe is so big, there could be life in the universe. Okay, okay, but what if within our solar system, let's say across our planets, there's no real life on anything else, which, yeah. which is a distinct possibility. That is one solar system in the context of a galaxy, in the context of a series of galaxies in the context of a universe that oh, yeah. we can't even know the limits of. And I've always thought it's incredibly narcissistic to assume that out of everything, this place with the 8 billion people and, you know, mm -hmm. the lions and the elephants and all the animals and the fish in the water, this is where the life is. And there isn't, forget just life, but there isn't a brilliant life form that exists somewhere else. I find that incredibly hard to believe, also considering the fact that creation had to start somewhere, and why would the creator, whoever that is, whether it's the God that's in, written in one of the holy books here, or something like it, or whatever it may be, why would they put, and again, this is an evidenceless comment, to be very clear, just a meta thought comment, why would they put the only life so many infinitesimal layers away? from where they exist. I find that, I find that in, I think almost you're over, impossible. I think you're over-indexing on the pocket that says we're nothing but dust and ashes. And what, you should, uh, how do you figure? You're saying that there, we should have humility and say that it's impossible for us to be the pinnacle of creation. Well, who knows? Maybe you should have the other pocket that said the whole universe was made for you. Not just humans, it was made for you, for you to do some grand mission. That's the notion of these two pockets. One is I'm nothing. I have to have humility and be uh, humiliated sometimes and make blunders that lose me the Nobel Prize. The other one, I have to say this is this cosmic feast, a buffet of infinite variety that's made just for me. Mm. And for me to extract pleasure and happiness and make other people happy and extract pleasure for them. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.